Hello and welcome to my art channel. Today's video is a how-to about stretching canvas onto a wooden frame. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, then stick around. My name is Christina Moyer and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you're into anything like art time lapses, paint with me sessions, and how-to videos like this one here. So in today's video, I'm starting with a frame that's already built, and then I'm going to take some canvas and size it and stretch it using staple gun and just stretching with my hands and a little bit of a wrench tool. I don't have a stretching tool, so that's something to invest in. I really want to get one because I have more stretching I want to do. And uh, we can also do some body stretching. <sighs> Stretch this side stretch the neck, all of that. <laughs> you could do that too if you want. Okay, so pad your surface a little bit just so you don't make as much noise and it protects the frame as well and the canvas. As you can see, one side looks different than the other. I have a beveled edge and then another side that's just flat. So the side that's beveled, that's the one with the pointed edge, that one, I'm going to put that flat down onto the canvas and I'm going to put it centered so that I have enough space around to pull canvas on all sides of my frame. So I'm going to just get my first side. We're going to call this side A and put a staple. You don't have to pull it tight or anything. Just wrap it around onto the flat end edge of the frame and staple down. My staple gun isn't the best. <laughs> I'm going to call this side B. So it's the opposite side of the longest of this canvas. So if you're doing a square, it doesn't you don't have any longer sides, but you want to do the opposite side. This time I'm going to pull tight, nice and tight. You need pull so tight, but not too tight to tear the canvas because they can tear. So be careful. It's kind of finding that threshold. <laughs> it's like when you're blowing a balloon up, you're trying to find that point where you blow it up quite full, but you don't want it to pop. So that's side B. So now you can see a bit of a wrinkle in the canvas and that's okay at this point. When I'm going to pull the sides, it's going to flatten that out more and you're, you'll see that. So I'm kind of pulling from both ends, but really you just need to pull from the one end, pull it quite tight. There are tools that can help you with this and I do hope to invest in them. They're not too expensive. I just, you know, only want to spend the money when I have to. <laughs> so I'm pulling tight with my hands and then putting a staple in the middle. Okay, so this side is flat. Oh dear. Well, <laughs> that didn't work too well, did it? I'm not sure if it was the piece of wood in that section was not liking it. Uh, if you have a knotted piece of wood, that can be a problem. But it looked fairly normal, so I think I need to upgrade my staple gun. So it's having some issues. So you're just going to see me struggle with to get this one in a bit, <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll get there. So when that happens, I'm just going to move a little bit to the right, just a little bit. I still want to keep myself centered, but just a little bit in a different spot because clearly that spot is not accepting the stable. It's still struggled. So I'm going to fix it with my hammer. Hopefully I do want it to go in nicely. Aha. Yay. Success. So we have side A, B, and C. Now we're going to go to the other side. So we want the middle of each side of the frame done first. We work from the middle out to the, to the side. So that one did quite well. Okay. You can still see a bit of wrinkle and we'll fix that as we keep going. So make sure you pull the same level of tightness as you go. You don't want to start less tight and then have wrinkles going around. So I'm pulling it and I'm giving myself a little space in between, maybe an inch or so is good. And then I'm going to hammer down those staples later. They're a bit frustrating. So let's just do those later. You can go as clo like closer to the, each staple, just leaving a small space in between each, especially if you're just starting out. I've framed a lot of these before, so I'm not too worried about my framing skills. So using your hands is a, lot harder than if you have a stretching tool. So I'm going to try out this little wrench. Now, what had happened is you can tear it and <laughs> you will see me tear it. And I'm not trying to hide any of 
what I do. So if I make a mistake, I want to show you and show you how I fix it as well, because it happens for all of us, I think, <laughs> at least just for me. <laughs> and so here we go, putting one on either side of the middle now. So we've started with A, B, C, D, if we're calling our sides by letter names, and then we're going to go A, A. So one on both sides of the middle one. And here we go, I'm gonna tear it. Oh, it tore, I pulled too hard. If you pull too hard and it tears, you can still staple it down. Luckily, my tear wasn't on the side of the frame. It was the, the part where I'm working on, which is technically the back of the frame. If it was on the side, ooh, I would not, I'd have to restart because I don't wanna, Put my artwork on something that's not going to work so if you're stretching your artwork that's already complete then you definitely want to be careful like extra careful as right now i don't have any artwork on this piece at all so i'm not too as worried but you still i don't want to waste so still going around on either side so continuing that same pattern so i'm adding one on each end see now we have five on this one and I keep going around and you can even add an extra one. It just, you're just trying to kind of keep it balanced as you're going around. So you can add a couple more, but you don't want to do a whole side, then move to the next side. You kind of, you want to do this rotating pattern, going around, adding another on both sides of the center of it. If that makes sense. I'm getting closer to my corners. As you get to your corners, you can actually staple. It's been a while since I'd done this, so I'd forgotten how close I could get. So one of the sides is going to, you can staple closer. Now, see how I folded it under so that the actual fold that shows is on the corner of the canvas. That kind of gives it that nice professional edge, that kind of seamless looking edge. So see, I could have stapled this one side all the way up basically yeah right up to there and then i did my fold so folding under you can see the diagonal line of fold on the side of the canvas and then i'm going to use this tool to pull it's just a wrench but be careful if you're using a wrench it can easily tear this I'm pulling it nice and tight in the corner i don't want my corners to sink in on the other side when I'm painting. And I'm gonna pull and put another staple in on that side, but it would be better to have it a little bit up higher so that it's in line with the wood. I can kind of see how that corner looks when I flipped it around, nice and tight. Professional. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna go to each corner. Now look at where I put it on that side. So I'm gonna make sure I put it on the same side. So if they're on the width of the canvas, keep them all on the width of the canvas. If they're on the length of the canvas side, put it all on the length. So I'm putting it all on the longer wooden side. So I'm folding it so that the underfold, see that part where it folds under, it's kind of the thicker side of it, is happening on the same sides of the canvas so that you don't have, it keeps consistency. Right, so we're keeping it consistent. Yeah, this tool is just not as good as a real stretching tool, <laughs> but it's what I had. And so it just goes to show you can use it. It just took me longer. So using your hands just takes longer. It's usually what tools do to just help us do things quicker. And again, right here, should have stapled it a little bit further where the wood is. Not that I didn't staple it on wood, you definitely always want to staple right on the wood, but I could have moved it over further. You'll see when I start cutting, trimming off some of the excess canvas, what I'm talking about then. Okay, we're getting a little stringy here, so let's pull some of these threads out of the way. You don't need those. <laughs> so again, I'm using the length of the wood, so the length, long side of the frame, to do the underfold. So I can pull the shorter side and staple it pretty much right up to the edge. So I can do more here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Give it a little more. And then I'm using the long side to create that under fold. 
make it nice and flat. If it's not flush, if it's kind of hanging over, refold it so that it, it doesn't stick out on the sides. You don't want that kind of sticking out, right? You just have to push a little bit more of the fabric underneath the fold to do that. And you do want it to be as flat as you can on the sides. You don't want to have it just kind of shoved under. It's, it's kind of a nice folded under type of thing. Okay, that corner. I'm sorry, I was slipping away from the view of the camera there. <laughs> And here we go. So the long side, see where I'm the shorter side of the wood, I'm going to staple closer to the edge. And now we're folding under. I don't go all the way with the one end stapled until I've finished my fold. It just gives you a little bit more leeway to play with the canvas. And, and then once I've got my fold kind of established, I'm like, hey, I can I can throw in another staple here. Once I get it nice and tight, I don't know if you can see how tight I'm pulling with my fingers, but it is quite tight. Just like I said, as tight as I can without tearing the canvas and that might take a little practice. So maybe if you even have a, maybe if you even have an extra little piece of canvas, pull at it, see how much strength it takes to pull tight versus tear and just don't get to that tearing point like I did <laughs> in the video. Okay, and pulling tight, and my cushioning underneath was kind of sliding, so <laughs> sliding out of view of the camera. <laughs> okay, now you should have almost a drum-like feel. Definitely, you can. it sounds almost like a drum when you're tapping your fingers on it. Now I'm going to hammer down all of those na um, staples, they're not nails, hammer down all the staples until it's nice and flush. Now, if there are any that are wonky, like that one, pull them out. So my, you know, the wrench did come in handy because it, you can also get a tool that pulls out staples and use the back of a hammer as well, often. And that little spot wasn't accepting the staple well, so I kind of did two on the sides of it. Did you see that? So hammering them all in, make sure they're all nice. If they're not, fix them. If it's just for a personal project, it's not you know, horrible if you keep some of those in, but uh, this one's for commission, so I don't want to have any that look wonky. Nice and flush, it's tight like a drum, and now I have all this excess canvas that looks a little bit messy. So this part you want to be very careful and use an X-Acto knife, a box cutter, just make sure it's sharp. Not sure if this one could have been a lot sharper, I believe. So be very careful. You don't want to cut yourself and you also don't want to cut the other side of the canvas. So just pushing it in enough to get it to cut it. In fact, if you're nervous about this, I would suggest using just scissors. But um, what's nice with the knife cutter is, especially when you have a longer canvas, larger one, it can give you a nice straighter looking edge. Now see it when it came to this end here, I could have stapled it up a bit higher so that I could cut that whole little piece right off. And I'm going to cut that piece off, but it could have been nice and straight and in line with my other cut. That would have been ideal, but it didn't happen. And it is the back of the canvas, so I'm not going to fret too much. But in the future, I will remember to do that because it's just been a while since I've stretched any canvases. So yeah, you can see I'm, I'm using the side of the wood as kind of a guide and it really helps to get that nice a nice straight edge there but I do think I want to move to scissors just because it's not as sharp as I'd like for my box cutter to be and these scissors aren't very good either so I think we're going to move over to some other scissors shortly just because I want it to I don't want it look, to look too messy even on the back side of a canvas just want to show some professionalism <laughs> in my work. Don't like to cut corners. <laughs> Although you do kind of have to cut part of the corner here. I'm sorry, that's not a funny, not a funny joke. 
yeah, let's let's move on to the other studio space and use some actual scissors that will, or sorry, scissors that will actually cut. <laughs> the others were scissors, they just didn't cut very well. And see how you can use scissors to cut your edge, the excess on the sides as well. And it worked quite well for this size. So I'm like working on an 11 by 14 approximately. And with scissors, it worked pretty well. So just trying to fix up some of those edges that didn't cut very well with the other tools I was using. Just don't cut the front of the canvas. <laughs> good, good. You can see how my corners look now that it's all stapled, trimmed. Look at that. See how the bulky fold side is on the same, all on the same sides. Right, they're on the long side. So clean this up and let's get gessoine. So I'm using another frame to hold up my finished stretched frame so that I can just so the sides and not get it all on the table. So I want to get all the edge. So I'm going to use this brush that I use exclusively for gessoing. I don't use it for anything else. I don't want any tinting happening. And I have my big thing of gesso. It's kind of old, so the seal on it is not great. But if yours is nice and well sealed, you're going to want to use a nice screwdriver to <laughs> flat edge screwdriver to open it up. And as you can see, Yours hopefully won't look gummy like mine is, but it's still good to use. It's not past the point of being able to use. There's just some chunks I have to work around. So I'm stirring it up with my little stir stick. Let's speed that up. And I have my brush ready to go nearby. And if you're worried about the surface you're painting under, definitely protect it with some drop cloths or plastic or something. And just cleaning that off so I can use it again someday and let's get painting right all over this so we want to cover the whole front and sides with gesso it's a very satisfying process <laughs> at least i think it is covering the first with the first layer you can do multiple layers i'm going to do two so we'll start by covering the whole canvas on the front And then we'll cover the sides as well. And even where the fold is, I like to kind of make sure that those, there's no canvas color showing all around the front and on the edges. Speed that up. Because there are some chunks in this paint, I did have to kind of scoop some of them out. You can kind of see like that. Yeah, wipe them out. It might work if you want a textured surface, but I like to work in thin layers that are smooth. So for me, I prefer to take them out because it will affect the overall look of my piece because I do paint in thin layers, like I said. Okay, and I use, you can see mostly a back and forth motion, back and forth, up and down, and let's get you another angle so you can see how I paint the sides. So the front is finished. See that little, even the corner, I want to kind of get the fold painted in. And because I've got this sitting on a frame, you can see the frame's getting some paint on it, but my table doesn't get too much paint. <laughs> a little bit, and that's okay. I just don't want the whole thing like covered. So you just make sure there's plenty of paint on your brush and just go back and forth in different directions, up and down, back and forth. Oh, got a little on my table, that's okay. This is my paint studio, I'm not too worried about it. It'll give it a little character, right? Cover it all up. Even a bit of fold that was kind of showing on the side there. Make sure that that's covered. Okay, so now I let it dry overnight. You don't have to let it dry that long, but I did let it dry overnight. And then I took a sand block and just went over the whole surface and the sides to smooth it down. I want to have a smooth surface to work on. So that's why I did that. You don't have to, but if you want a nice smooth surface, then that's what you want to do. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did, only now it's a second coat of paint. So starting at the front, back and forth motions, making sure my little 
globs of paint are not getting stuck on there. Making sure there's enough paint on my brush, but I'm wanting a nice smooth surface. This is where you could add texture and then use your gesso to kind of cover the textured items that you're adding to your canvas if you're doing that sort of thing. Just covering it nice, making sure that if I were any spots that were missed somehow, that those are covered. This will give me a good surface to paint on once it's fully dry. And then again, I will sand it down again after it dries the second time. And then my canvas will be ready to work on. So we're just about done here as we finish the sides. Make sure when you're doing the sides that you don't have any dripping happening on the other edges that you're working on. So when you're working on the top, it could be dripping onto the sides, so watch for that. And then if you're doing the bottom, it could drip onto the back, so you might want to wipe the underneath side a little bit as well. If you're kind of heavy with the paint, you know. Well, what do you think? That wasn't too hard, was it? Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. If you found any value or thought it was entertaining in the least, would you please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below what you want to see next or what your preference is. What's your favorite? Do you like time lapses? Do you like how-to videos? Do you want more paint night sessions like paint with me sessions? I'm hoping to do get on a regular schedule for that. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time. There is a crazy thing going on out here. You guys check this out. Okay, we gotta... There's some crazy stuff happening out here. Crazy. <laughs> I get a little distracted when things are happening like this around me. They're capping off some kind of well or something. Don't think the autofocus function works on my camera. It's like when I paint people into my paintings and they're just these tiny little figures. It's so interesting because you can't see any of the facial features. It's just these bodies basically. I just feel powerful if I'm driving a big truck. Can't imagine driving those trucks, operating those cranes. I'm like, forget my video, this is more interesting. <laughs> I'd be like, no, you can't film this. I'm sorry. I'll just act natural, like I'm doing something else. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, let's get back to the task at hand. Now it's going to have to be... Let's not zoom in that close. Okay, that's better. This tripod is not the most expensive. <laughs> okay, is that... Am I in focus? Okay. Ah! You guys, did you like that little interlude? Okay. <laughs> I got cords in the way. All right, you guys. So thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Well, you kind of came to my channel, didn't you? So thank you for joining me in today's video. I hope you had fun and enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see my next video. I always actually hate when people say subscribe all the time because it's something I just do naturally. Like if somebody says subscribe, it's not going to make me subscribe to their channel, but maybe some people kind of forget that you're watching a video and you might not be able to see someone like me again, unless you subscribe. So do it. Okay. Until next time. Bye.